Welcome to Proverbs for Life Today, a ministry of ChristAssembly.org. My name is Bert Allen. Today, I like to start the video with a little description of what Jesus came to earth to do. And it's real simple. He came to die on a cross in my place and your place. He paid the death penalty for us because he loves us very much. But we have to receive that free gift of salvation that he bought with his blood. He paid the death penalty on that cross that you deserve and I deserve because we are sinners who fall short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. But he offers us that free gift of life. If we'll believe that he died for us, then his gift of salvation comes into our life by faith alone. If you want to know more about that, then stick around to the end of the video and I'll share with you from the scriptures how you can have eternal life by faith in Jesus today. But for now, let's dive into the study. Today we'll look at Proverbs chapter 7, verse 6. For at the window of my house I looked out through my lattice. Now the first thing we notice is the word for, right? So we know that this thing's connected backwards up to this verse. So let's see what he was talking about. Oh yeah, he was talking about the adulteress and the woman who flatters with her words. Yep. That's what he was talking about. And he said that wisdom and understanding, those two things right here, will keep us out of problems with her down here. And we know that the problem is that she's going to try to flatter us with her words, that she and the foreigner, well, okay. So let's think about it. Now he's looking out from the window at his house. And we see that window right there. And maybe you spent some time looking out of windows. I remember being in a city once and I could look out the balcony and the traffic down below was just unbelievable. There's no stop sign. There are no traffic signs. And people would crash there about every half an hour or so. And lots of near misses all the time. But it was quite the sight when you sat up there and looked down and looked out. But Solomon's talking about looking out the window of my house. So this is something you can see. You can sit in your house and look out in a cityscape and see who's about to get into trouble. You know, in a lot of big cities today, there are certain parts of town that you go there and you know it's going to be drug addicted. You know there's going to be a lot of immorality. You know there's going to be a lot of trouble in that area of town. But then there are other areas where you think things are okay. But then you look out the window and you see your neighbor going over there and he's going into the neighbor's, his neighbor's wife. And you know that's going to be a big problem because that kind of leak, news leaks out and gets really huge. But as he looked out, he looked out through his lattice. So we know what's coming. And we'll talk about this tomorrow. But he's going to see the naive. And they're going to go to that adulteress and the foreigner who flatters. And things are going to head south. So I want to make a point from verse 6. Just one point for today. If you don't think nobody's looking, if you think you're all by yourself when you're out there hustling and moving and doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, there's always somebody watching. And today with video cameras and surveillance of all types, there's always somebody at the window looking. And what are they going to be thinking when they see you out there doing your thing, doing immorality, doing robbery, doing theft, doing all kind of crazy stuff? But he's focusing here upon immorality and adultery. And he says, I was out there looking. Well, you know, God's always looking too. Do you really think that you're going to get away with it? God's always looking. So let's remember verse 6 is the lattice verse. There's always somebody behind that lattice looking at you and wondering, what are you doing? Why are you going over to her house? Why are you embracing her? Don't you remember if you take hot coals in your bosom, you'll be burned? Don't you remember if you walk over hot coals, you'll burn your feet? Well, why would we do that? And God's looking. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that we'd remember that somebody's always looking, and you always know. When we go off to an adulterer, to a foreigner, when we go out to do terrible things, we know you're looking, Lord. We know somebody's always behind the lattice looking. We thank you for that, Lord, to remind us we should always expect that people will know exactly what we're doing and be proud of it. Happy for everyone to watch. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray and thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Before I close the video, I'd like to share with you four verses about eternal life. I often ask people this simple question. Why should Jesus let you into heaven? And the answer to that question surprises many people because it comes from the Bible and it's simple and it's clear. Most folks, when they hear that question, they tell me, well, I've been good or tried to do more good than bad or I tried hard or I've done a lot of nice things and I hope God will let me into heaven. They somehow think if their good works outweigh their bad works that God will let them in. But God says, actually, I'll let people into heaven because of a free gift. But the story from Jesus starts with four verses, and I'm going to read them one at a time. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 You see, for every person who lives today on earth in human flesh, we've all sinned, every one of us. We've all told a lie. We've all done or said something that made somebody else angry and we were doing it out of anger ourselves. We've all done things to hurt other people at one time or another. God says that's all sin and I look upon that as falling short of my glory, God says. God says we should never fall short of his standard, which is the glory of God. Well, is it serious that we've sinned? Should I be worried about that? Everybody sinned. Why should I worry? Well, consider Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, that all of us deserve the death penalty. At the moment we sin, we incurred the death penalty for the smallest sin or the biggest sin. I'm happy that Romans 6.23 continues and says, But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, if you've been listening carefully and thinking about what the Bible says, so far, we've learned that we're all sinners, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all deserve the death penalty. This doesn't sound like good news until you read the last part of that last verse. It says that God has a free gift for all of us. It's in Christ Jesus our Lord, and it's eternal life. The free gift of eternal life that only Jesus Christ can give you. He said he's the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. Why would God offer us this great gift if we're all sinners? Well, Romans 5, 8 tells us. It says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died for us. He died in our place. God loves sinners like you and like me. He died in my place and in your place. He paid the death penalty for me. I often illustrate the free gift like this. That I have this old Nissan truck. It has 285,000 miles on it. It's not that great a truck. It sits at the beach every day. But I illustrate the point this way. I hold up the keys to my truck and I say, I'm going to make you a symbolic gift of my truck. But until you take the keys out of my hand, it's not your truck yet. Well, let me tell you what I mean. A lot of people have been going to church for years. They know all about Jesus. They can quote verses about Jesus. But they know in their heart that they're not quite right with God. And there's never been a day in their life where they've been born again and they know it. You see, they're just staring at the keys in God's hand and he's offering you. The free gift today of saying, reach out by faith and receive that free gift and take it into your heart today. Receive the free gift. Okay, how do we do that? Well, Romans 10.9 tells us how to do that. It says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And he means saved from the death penalty eternal destruction. So we can receive that free gift right now by faith and we can pray a prayer together. I urge you to pray with me. I'm going to pray it right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you love me. I confess that I am a sinner and I fall short of the glory of God. 
I confess, too, that I deserve the wages of sin, which is death. But, Lord, you offer me the free gift of eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I accept that free gift right now. I believe that you love me and that God died on the cross for me, that Jesus Christ is God, and he died on the cross for me. You paid the death penalty for me, Lord Jesus. Thank you so much. I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins, and I accept that free gift, Lord. Thank you so much that you have forgiven me. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I'd love you to send me an email and we'll rejoice together. Send me the email at friend at christassembly.org. That's friend at christassembly.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Scripture quotations taken from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, copyright 1995 by the Lockman Foundation. Used by permission, all rights reserved.